for joining us today for Lyle Township Democratic Organization, LTDO TV. My name is Diane Hewitt and I'm the Vice Chair of LTDO. Today we're going to be talking about Minivan Touch. It's a way of using Vote Builder through a handheld digital device. Um, you can do it while you're walking, you can do it while you're at home, but it's a digital interface in order to use a walk list. So we're going to go through the screenshots one by one. To begin with, we will put on Minivan Touch onto whichever digital device you prefer to use. We'll start off with the Apple products. If you wish to use an iPhone or an iPad, then you go to your App Store application, which looks like the above, and press on that, and then look for Minivan Touch, and then we'll go from there. If you have an Android product, then go to the Play Store application, and then you will get the Minivan Touch from there. If you use an Apple or an Android product, the rest will be the same. So we start off here with the Minivan 7 Touch opening screen, and the first thing that you'll decide to do is do you have a password or do you not? And if you have already used Vote Builder or an Action ID in the past, then start with the white portion and log in with an Action ID. If you have never done this before, then create your own Action ID in the center. Assuming that this is your first time using Action ID, then we push this, the middle button. And to begin to create your Action ID, you put in your email address. I then pick out a password. I prefer to write this down somewhere in my phone and save it. Um, and then you want to add in your first and your last name. And this is scrolling down a little bit further down. And after you see your first and your last name and you've entered those in, then you can enter in your phone number. Um, and then you want to check that box to confirm that you have, um, that you have read the privacy uh, policy and read the privacy policy, and you create an account. If this isn't your first time with Minivan, or for every time after your first time, you want to enter in with that first button and it's login with an Action ID. You enter in your email address and you enter in your password. If you have forgotten your password, then you press the button right below the password and it will allow you to reset your password. If you have any problems with the password or logging on, then you want to contact whoever is organizing the Canvas or the administration director of the county. Whoever is organizing the Canvas will give you a 13-digit number, eight digits to begin with and five digits after the hyphen. These digits will allow you to enter in a number. This list number is good for only 30 days. After you put in your list number, then it begins you off with the lowest, alphabetically, the highest A to Z order that it will have. On the top left corner will be the main option bar. To the right of that, with the magnifying glass, is the search feature. To the right of that is the filter feature. To the right of that is the sync feature. To begin with, we'll walk through what happens when you press that those three lines on the left-hand corner it is the main option bar. This is the main bar that you will decide with where to go after this. It allows you from the left hand side at the top to find your next door. That feature is very helpful. Below that is the household listings which describes street by street the listing of people in your list. It can be determined to decide people if you wanted to go by names first. Underneath that is the map feature. Underneath that is your list number and then the percentage that you have done. Beside, underneath that are the list details with all of the information in there. Then you have the sync feature and then download a new list. And then we'll go down below there to the next screen. Moving further down, it allows you to download a new list, see who is logged in, and then also, if there's a problem, you can figure out a help feature. There's also a logout option. So let's go to the beginning of the top 
where there is a find our next um, address location feature. This is very nice so that you can, if you're ever not sure of where you're going, you can always figure out what the closest address is to you. So there is a switch to beta feature, which means that they're trying out a new option. But if you go down, the closest house to me then is my house. And then the next closest on the list is 6021. If I were to choose the people option, then this is exactly what it would do. It would give me people. If I were to choose the map function, then I can see exactly how many different people are on which block. And I can, if I were to zoom in more, I could decide, oh, well, this block only has two people, this block has five people, and this one has 20. So it allows us to see numerically where you need to go for the most people. You also have the opportunity to change that over into a satellite image. That way you can see a much clearer Google Maps satellite image of wherever you are. So if you're on a court, you can see exactly everything, the type of roof that the person has and what's in their driveway and if they have a basketball hoop in their driveway, for example. Below the map feature is the list details. This allows you to know, starting at the top, again, it shows you your list number. It then tells you how much progress that you've made on however many doors. And it gives you a percentage, statistically. It'll tell you how many doors are in your list, how many people are in your list, who has been given this list, at what point in time it was given. It says that it expires on January 9th, but they really only last 30 days. This screenshot is illustrating the search function, which happens when you see that little magnifying glass. This will bring you to that point. So then where there's that red search function written, right below there, you can enter in whatever you're searching for, if it's a name or if it's an address. From our top main general screen, then there is that little filter symbol. And what that does is it allows you to decide to filter out information or filter it in. For example, and you can push multiple um, options on this. So if you wanted to put all the odds on one side or filter them by evens or filter them, for example, if you had gone out one day and had canvassed your neighborhood and then wanted to come back to the people that were not home. Um, or had wanted to come back to the places that were um, not contacted. That way you can filter your list. So to begin with, we'll start with my house. I live at 6008 Lennox Court in Lyle. And when you get to a house, then what you do see is you see however many circles are there, however many people they have that live in that house. So there's two circles next to my name, which means that there's two people that live here. So we're going to press the 600 Linux court. Now we can see exactly where my house is. We can see my age and my name and my husband's name and age. And um, so then what will happen is you'll dis decide, oh, well, I'm either going to be talking to Diane or Steven. And it's kind of obvious whether it's a male or a female. Um, and then you go from there. So if we're going to be talking to me, we'll start off with talking to me. So after we push the person that we're going to be talking to, then we have to first decide, were we able to contact this person? And that's at that top button with the red arrow. And this is important one to fill in because it's either a yes or a no, but it's the why that tends to be important. So if you were not able to contact this person, then it was because they were not home? Was it because they refused? Um, was it because they were inaccessible, meaning the house was inaccessible? Is it because they were deceased? Um, or is it because they moved? And it's important then to have this properly filled in because if they did move, we want to not bother, uh, we want to know who is actually there. And if they died, we don't want to aggravate anybody um, and we want our, the records to be accurate. 
So it is important to fill in what happened, why you couldn't reach that person. At the very top of the screen, when you see the person, when after you press the button of the person that you're talking to, then there's two options up at the top. There's the option on the left that says script and the option on the right that has details. So to begin with, we'll go through the details. And this way you know who you're talking to a little bit better. And I often look at the details before I talk to this person. So for me, um, I'm Diane C. Hewitt. This is my address. That is my voting city. And that is my age. And then we're just going to go down further on my details. I am a female. I missed one primary in 2016. I thoroughly apologize. Uh, but I have made every general election. I am very much a likely Democrat. Just so you know, they stopped changing the party's likely party after 2008. So this portion is the least accurate. Um, it is just, it should be either, it should be changed, but it's just the least accurate. It will tell you where my polling location is for Election Day, which is at Trinity Lutheran Church. Going further down, it will have my phone number. It gives you the option to text me. So if I not, if you knock on my door and I'm not there, and say you're, I'm younger than I am, or say you just wanted to text me, you can text that person right from here. It's great. You can also call that person. A lot of times, the younger people that it tends to be easiest to call or text them, especially if they live in a mixed um, household with a, a mixed political household. You can also add a phone number. So if you get to that person's house and you want to let them know um, about the upcoming election um, and give them a reminder um, for the municipal elections, you can add their phone number. You can also add their email. This is really important to get them more information about upcoming elections and our local political organization. If you happen to have their email or their text, then I would just send them an email or a text real quick while you're there um, and just let them know that you've been there and what you're up to. It's really helpful um, to add them to our mailing list our, for our e-blasts and whatnot. And for that, you just send an email to Lyle Township Dems at Gmail and add the name and the email to add to it. And it, they, that person will be added to our email list. Below the email, moving further down, it will tell you if it is within one campaign, since this is through the DuPage Dems that I had done this, it'll tell me which, when I had been canvassed before. So I had given myself a canvas when I was figuring out how to do Miniman. I had canvassed myself several times and I had wanted to figure out whether how it worked. So this is my contact history. And before that point, in 2008, it had already figured out that I was an early voter. And then 2012, it really knew I was an early voter. In 2016, I became a precinct committeeman. And in uh, 2017, I was on the ballot for becoming a precinct committeeman. So these things made the Democratic Vote Builder uh, database. And these were some of the responses to the questions that I had created to test out um, minivan. And I, of course, was hoping to get rid of Trump. And the economy is extremely important. Now here is the script portion, and the script portion has two meanings. The first meaning is that it's the computer program that we can enter in answers from. So without having questions in your script, you wouldn't have a place to put in answers. They're not meant to be read verbatim, word for word. They're meant to be given as a suggestion, and the volunteer will make the script their own. So to begin with, we'll assume that the person is actually at home and you always begin with an introduction telling them who you are. Um, and so the beginning would go, hi, my name is Diane and I'm a local Democratic volunteer and I'm a neighbor. I'm trying to get information to my neighbors about the next election, which starts on 927 and ends on 11 18 
To be sure we are addressing your electoral issues, what are the top two issues that most motivate you to vote in the next election? And then we wait for them to answer. And it's the hardest part to wait for them to answer, but you need to allow. I usually don't enter in my information into minivan while the person is waiting there um, because I feel like it's not good form. I usually wait until after I leave. But the issues then, in order to press that button, you press the Lyle issue button right next to underneath that red arrow and it'll give you a bunch of common options and these are make it easier to categorize people's responses. Now we wait for their response and usually one of the responses will go into one of these common issues. A common one is state and fiscal taxes, education, local economy and jobs, environment, health care, common sense gun reform, there's a few more options that are listed below that and you just scroll the screen down and it also has an other option so that you can label whatever issue that they have. Usually with that first question you'll either get the start of a conversation or not and so at any point in the rest of the rest of the script you can decide to stop. There's an off ramp at any one point to say thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a great day. But if in order to keep going and basically escalate the scale of engagement, we want to figure out, well, where is their support level? So on the next question, it says on a scale of one to five, with five being a for sure supporting a Democratic candidate and a one for sure not supporting Democrats, where would you say you are on that scale? It helps to open up the conversation as to, you know, do you even want to talk to me or hear any of the information? or not. And this way you can, you know, quicken up your whole canvas. So then you'll want to press the button right below the press, the red arrow. This way you can determine this person strongly um, opposes, they likely oppose, they're unsure, they're likely support, and they're strong support. Um, with the, this allow is very similar to a candidate ID question and it's essentially just a party ID question and in the end it'll allow different candidates to realize that they have a chance or they do not have a chance or people that they can um, so that candidates can know who to go back to and the party knows who not to go back to. If you have somebody that you want to continue the conversation with because they want to continue the conversation as well then you want to walk them through their vote plan. This allows them to visualize what it is like going to be to make that vote. If you help them visualize this in their minds, they're more likely to go do it. So this is where we walk through their plan. When the person gives you their plans, it helps to give you a response to help their plan become reality. For example, if they tell you that they want to do the mail-in ballot option, you can give them the link for the mail-in ballot application. You can also advise them as to how fast and how slow the election commission is processing those ballots. Sometimes when it gets close, you want to encourage the early voting or the in-person option at their polling place. Um, and it also allows you to open up the conversation for the early voting locations beginning what, at whatever time that you're talking to them. It also gives you the option to remind them of where they can vote their polling place if it has changed. Um, it also gives you the option to change their mind with the absentee ballot to a mail-in ballot that is better counted. Also, it gives you the options for why they are or are not voting. This question allows you to answer any other questions that the voter may have that may prevent them from voting in the next election. So you'll press the button below the previous button that will give you the options. These are commonly held questions that a voter may have. It often helps to ask what their questions may be and sometimes they'll give you their question and you can help them answer it. For this one, we want to make sure that if we find a strong Democrat, we get them information about upcoming events and what's going on with Lyle Township Democratic Organization. 
This way we get their name and their email and we send it to lyletownshipdems at gmail.com. That will then be added to our own small group email, not given to a campaign and not given to any other larger groups. If they happen to be living on a very well-traveled street in the middle of election season, then it's helpful to know if they would have a sign up for a candidate. And then it's even more helpful to know which candidate's sign they would like. So this way, when we do get signs for candidates, we can just ship them out. For this one, it'll be a yes or no response. And then if you have a sign, I would put it in an email to yourself, um, in addition to the same one to the Lyle Dems. If they're interested in getting more involved in the election, perhaps they could be an election judge. We have a shortage, and we have a brochure that you can use to let people know about how to become one and the procedure of that. Relatively rarely will you make it to the end of this list, but if you have, then they're very interested in the Democratic Party. What I would do is ask them if they would like to be a volunteer. Not everybody needs to be canvassing. People need to be doing all sorts of different things like phone banking, doing things with computers, on social media. It takes a whole village to do this. So if you they're at all interested, give them a brochure and get their name and email and we can give them further contact. When you ask this question, you need to always remember what time in the election cycle in the year you are at when you're asking this. But asking with the motor voter form, you can see if anyone else in the house needs to be registered to vote. If they do need to be registered to vote and it is in between the time when you cannot ask for the not cannot register them yourself, then you can send them to 421 North County Farm Road in Wheaton and they can register and vote on the same day, um, which is a really great option here. I always encourage online voter registration at the Illinois Board of Election website or the DuPage Election Commission website. This option is not available 16 days prior to an election. Sometimes the person that may need to register to vote is not there. That in those cases, then I get their name and their phone number. If it's a cell phone number, that's the best way to reach them, or an email number. And I usually write myself an email directly, um, or I write the Lyle Gmail email in order to make sure that they get registered to vote. But in any which way, what you would want to do is record your answer with the no, yes, and I want to, or the don't want to. And it really helps to define why the person is in that position. It often helps to see if anybody else is at home that wants the information, or if you can leave an extra set of information for that other person while they are not there. Moving further down the script portion, we see the notes section. This is extremely helpful. The one thing to note in your own mind is that the only people that can see the notes are the people that have pulled any information about that house and from the campaign or the group that you're working with. So if you think that, if, that a variety of different campaigns can see your notes, that is not true and it's very hard for you to come back and find your notes. So if you have a particular piece of information for that particular house, I would put it in a note written to yourself in a different form. But in this particular area, somebody had noted that my phone numbers hadn't been updated. And somehow in 2013, even though I had moved out of my parents' home, my parents' house was somehow being linked to my home, to my account, and I'd never lived up there. Right here, you can add a note for the next canvasser or for anybody that's going to this house again. And they can see, but again, it's only through this campaign or this group during the time frame that this vote builder session is open. So there are limits to what you can see and what you'll see. But when you add a note, you can give a description of a, 
dangerous dog that you never want to come near or a person that has a specific issue that it would help for that campaign to know or a specific anything. Um, this is the best place to put things that you haven't been able to find a spot for but you think the campaign or somebody should know about. We finished seeing everything on my side of the script and on the details and because time has passed I went and early voted. This is extremely helpful to know that this type of a dynamic list will know who has voted by mail, who has voted early, so that when you're in the last stretch of a get out the vote campaign, you don't waste any time with the people that have already voted. So if I had knocked my door, I would know not to even talk to Diane because I already had voted and my purpose canvassing was no longer needed. So I would then go to directly to Stephen Hummel. Going back to my husband's point of view, we can see that he has a similar um, pieces of information with the script at the top and the details on the right. For this piece of information, it's interesting because he had voted in a general and a primary, but it didn't show in which state. So his records hadn't moved over. Um, his likely party was not determined because he didn't live in the state in 2008, and his polling location is the church. For this screen, the main thing to have of interest is the activist code history. It shows that he had a vote by mail application returned. And what the interesting background is that J.B. Pritzker's campaign had targeted certain people for a vote by mail application and he had been targeted and he was very excited to get his vote by mail and it shows that all of that had been done. So if you were going through here, you would know that he probably was voting by mail. Thank you for joining us today for this episode of LTVO TV focusing on minivan touch. I hope this helped explain things. Please go over this again and the more you use this, the easier it gets. Thank you for joining us.